It's you know what I mean. It's I can speak to what goes on or what has gone on in, in the United States. I mean, clearly, as you pointed out, you know, as a result of World War II and even World, World War One, in Europe, the citizens are a little more attuned to what's going on. But they're, I mean, for the most part, they they're probably brain dead. Also, they've been you know they've been brainwashed. But uh, you know, ever since ever since uh, essentially Nixon, you know tore up the Bretton Woods agreement. And that, that, this is it. That's what's happening. And I think we, we've, um, you know, whereas you might have had um, no enemy of, of Russia, no enemy of China sitting back, taking, enjoying the, the paper discount, enjoying that gold window is still opened and they're seeing this gold window and they're taking physical, taking physical, building massive reserves, uh, while the fools on, on, on the US side of the, of, of the, of the equation uh, I mean, Europe at least has has accrued some form of physical to back their currency. I'm mean, not saying it backed, but they have some form of physical. Uh, Europeans, because of uh, war conditions, so Second World War conditions, they're, they're much more acclimatized to go. But, but as you know, I wonder how many how many people other, no, in your sphere, everyone is loaded with this physical gold and silver. But outside of that sphere, I mean, how many, what does the average American person own in gold? Do they even know what it is other than a ring? But less than 1%. Uh, you know, I would say that, you know, my, my friends here, you know, the people that I socialize with, play tennis with, whatever, you know, we don't even talk about this stuff. I, I wouldn't even want to spring it on them because they think I'm, you know, a space alien <laughs> coming to, to deliver conspiracy theories. They, they have no idea. <laughs> No idea. <laughs> they don't, you know, I, less than 1% of, of the U.S. citizens own physical metal. You know, and, you know, if you ask, sometimes if you ask guys, hey, do you, you own any gold? Yeah, I got GLD, you know, and then it's just like, I don't even bother Whoa. discussing it. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you really yeah. don't have gold. <laughs> then you really get into trouble, don't you, Dave, when you tell yeah. them they and don't have anything. If you manage anything. to sell GLD before it blows up, what's going to end up in your stock account? more fiat dollars. <laughs> you don't own gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think that the one thing that kind of strikes me all the time is, is that because, as I say, the average, I'm looking at the average American now, and, 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 and of course it goes globally, but, you know, but when you, when there is a price, gold price revaluation, which is coming, it, it has to come, right? So the lopsided balance now is all the physical is with basically 80 20 rule it's all with russia china and their friends um okay so what happens when gold is six seven eight nine ten thousand what, whatever just a, a, a much higher price the average indian farmer cycling down a dusty road is incredibly wealthy versus the average american and and you suddenly think this is like a polar shift and it's like wake up that's why i say to people wake up you, you need to own some physical but make sure it's physical but it's amazing to me how 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 can people get it that wrong it's you know what i mean it's i can speak to what goes on or what has gone on in, in the united states i mean clearly as you pointed out you know as a result of world war ii and even world, world war one in Europe, the citizens are a little more attuned to what's going on, but they're, I mean, for the most part, they, they're probably brain dead also. They've been, you know, they've been brainwashed. But, uh, you know, ever since, ever since uh, essentially Nixon, you know, tore up the Bretton Woods Agreement, there's, there has not been any effort at all in this country to educate people about the difference between gold, r real money, and fiat currency. So people people think you know people think that the dollars that they hold in their pocket they think that's money it's not it's a debt instrument right it's a debt instrument and the counterparty to that debt instrument is the U.S. government mm -hmm. you know and so like you know I went to the University of Chicago Business School from eighty nine to ninety one and I you know I'm taking these finance courses from guys who were part of you know the group of PhDs who invented modern finance. We never talked about gold. It was never mentioned. So, you know, the bulk of the people in this country, 
just never bothered to educate themselves. I think they just assume, you know, there's a sense of entitlement here. Yeah, as long as I got dollars in my pocket, walking around money and dollars in the bank account, you know, I've got wealth. Well, no, you don't. And you point out, you know, what's going to happen, you know, when gold goes to five, six, seven thousand dollars an ounce. Well, you're talking about measuring the price of gold in terms of the number of dollars that it takes. Yeah. Well, the, the 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 counterpart to that to that dynamic is that the dollar has become less and less, or more and more worthless. And essentially, what it's going to do is, if you basically said, you know, that the U.S. scheme where uh, you know, you got a strong dollar policy, and you you issue debt, and that basically pays for your your um, current account deficit, your trade deficit. It's essentially been a way to um, pull, you know, transfer wealth from the rest of the world into the United States. Well, now what's going to happen is, as as the price of gold goes up, and as as um, you know, the 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 the, the scheme. Not I wouldn't. I don't want to call it a scheme, but the system that kind of Russia with China in the background have set up, you're, that wealth that's been transferred into the United States is going to get sucked right back out, right? And even if you're a millionaire, you know, if you're, if the standard of measuring the value of your currency is gold or, or energy, you know, your dollars mm -hmm. aren't worth very much anymore. And it's, it's going, like I said, it's going to make uh, living conditions for people in this country extremely difficult. Certainly, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's going to create living conditions that no one in this country has been used to since World War, well, really since the Depression, right? And, you know, it's, it's going to, it's going to, create, as you point out with the Indian farmer example, it's going to create a class of wealth in the Eastern Hemisphere that, you know, that population hasn't, hasn't known for a long time or has never known. So, and that's, that's what I see happening. Yeah, no, that's it. I, 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 you're, you're bang on, and I think it's um, it, it's you know I had a I remember we had an interview with Daniela Di Martino Booth, and ex Fed insider, right? And you know her, um, and she said the Fed and all the time she was there, the Fed had never even mentioned the word gold once, not one single time. Uh, it's just not on their radar. They just don't get it at all.